Nepal's women team clinched the five-match T20 International Series against Malaysia, registering a three-wicket victory in the final match of the series today. Although playing away from home, Team Nepal were expected to have an easy outing against a youthful Malaysian squad before the start of the series. However, Nepal were made to work hard by the spirited Malaysian women. Cricket analysts felt that Nepali players, despite possessing skill, looked short on fitness, which is a must for modern-day cricketers if they wish to excel at top level. Good evening, I'm Avyude Shrestha, and these are the headlines of the hour. The Supreme Court gives a short-term interim order not to implement the citizenship bill. Opposition parties disrupt House session, protesting against the authentication of the citizenship bill. The pre-detention trial of the alleged culprits in the fake Putinese refugee scam begins to decide whether the accused will be released on bail or sent to custody. At least eight people arrested amid tight security as Hong Kong observes Tiananmen anniversary, London, New York, Berlin and Taiwan to hold anniversary vigil. And Nepal clinched the five-match women's T20 series against Malaysia with a hard-fought three-wicket victory in the last encounter. Rubina Chetri adjudged the player of the series. The Supreme Court has given a short-term interim order not to implement the citizenship bill approved by the president. A single bench of Supreme Court Justice Manoj Sharma issued the short-term verdict not to implement the citizenship bill authenticated by President Ram Chandra Porel last Wednesday. Senior advocate Surendra Bhandari and Balakrishna Nyopani had moved the Supreme Court, citing that President Ram Chandra Porel's certification of the citizenship bill was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has also issued a show cause notice in the name of the President's office. Opposition parties obstructed the meeting of the House of Representatives today, protesting against the recently authenticated citizenship bill and the remarks made by Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal during his visit to India. Due to the protests, meetings of both the houses have been adjourned until tomorrow. Speaker Devraj Khimri postponed the House meeting for an hour after main opposition CPN YML, along with Rashtriya Swatantra Party and Rashtriya Prasantra Party, obstructed the meeting, citing that the citizenship bill was authenticated without carrying out required procedures and demanding answers from the government regarding Premier Dahal's statement, saying that Nepal is ready to hand over Kalapani in place of Fulbari Transit. At the start of the House meeting today, CPNUML Chief Whip Padam Giri said that the meeting would not start until an apology is made regarding Premier Dahal's statement during his India visit to swap the territories and added that the constitution has been breached by authenticating the citizenship bill. Rashtriya Prasantra Party Chairperson Rajendra Lingden also demanded answers from Prime Minister Dahal regarding the unified Greater India map installed at the new parliament building of India, of which includes Nepal's Lumbini and Kapil Bastu. Lingden also stated that President Ram Chandra Podel issuing a pardon to Resham Choudhury without the Supreme Court issuing a detailed verdict was against the rule of law. Chief Whip of Rashtriya Swatantra Party, Santos Pariyar, protested against the wrong procedure adopted to authenticate the citizenship bill. The meeting of the House of Representatives, which was halted for an hour, was unable to sit again as consensus was not reached to resume the meeting. Speaker Ghimine then adjourned the House meeting until 11 a.m. tomorrow. At today's House meeting, Minister for Finance Prakash Sharan Mahat was scheduled to propose for discussions on the expected revenues and expenditures of the next fiscal year. Likewise, the meeting of the National Assembly has been adjourned until 1 p.m. tomorrow. Main opposition CPNUML, along with other opposition parties, had obstructed the meeting, protesting against the procedure adopted to authenticate the citizenship bill and Prime Minister Dahal's remarks made during his visit to India. Chairperson of the National Assembly, Ganesh Timilsana has issued a ruling for the government to provide answers to the issues. A protest rally against the recently authenticated citizenship bill was organized in Kathmandu today. Nepal Workers' Peasants' Party held the rally this morning, protesting against the president's controversial authentication of the citizenship bill. 
the protest rally, which had the participation of leaders and cadres of Nepal Workers' Peasants Party, started from Koteshwar and ended at New Baneshwar. At the gathering outside the building of the House of Representatives, speakers demanded to scrap the citizenship bill. The citizenship bill, which was passed by the previous federal parliament and halted by then-President Vidya Devi Bhandari, was authenticated by President Ram Chandra Podel on 31st of May, the day Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal started his India visit. The pre-detention trial of the alleged culprits in the fake Bhutanese refugee case has begun from today. The interrogation of all the 18 arrested culprits had ended last Friday. The single bench of Justice Prem Kumar Neopani will give a verdict on whether to release the defendants on simple date, release on bail or send them to custody. A case was filed by the Office of the Government Attorney on 24th of May making 30 individuals as defendants seeking a fine of just over 275 million rupees alongside sentencing. Most of the defendants have rejected the alleged charges levied against them. However, investigating police officials have expressed their confidence regarding evidences to prove the involvement of the defendants. Nepal police have also recommended action from the anti-graft body CIAA in the cases involving former Home Minister Balkrishna Khan, former Deputy Prime Minister Tovbadur Rai Maji, and Indrajit Rai, the security advisor of former Home Minister Ram Badur Thapa. This is the first incident that a case has been filed against the leadership level at the Home Ministry. The verdict in the case that has rocked the nation is expected to take a few more days. Police in the Philippines have rescued 69 Nepali citizens who were sent there by a group of human traffickers. It has been revealed that those Nepalese who reached the Philippines on visit visas were held hostage and were forced to partake in online scams. A total of 69 Nepalese, including four women, were rescued during a raid in a popular commercial area located at a distance of about 100 kilometers from the country's capital, Manila. Nationals of other countries were also rescued during the raid. Twelve individuals involved in the operating the online scam business have been arrested. The Nepali embassy in Malaysia that monitors Philippines affairs has said that besides Nepalese, those held hostage included nationals of India, China, Bhutan, Thailand, Malaysia, Taiwan, Indonesia and Vietnam. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public poll. Here's the question. What should the government do to promote the Nepali film sector? Your options are A, adopt film industry friendly policy, B, establish film city, and C, search for international market. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international updates. Hong Kong police today detained eight people near a park, four of them for seditious intention and disorderly conduct as authorities tightened security on the 34th anniversary of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. Restrictions in Hong Kong have stifled what were once the biggest vigils marking the bloody crackdown by Chinese troops on pro-democracy demonstrators leaving cities like London, New York, Berlin and Taipei to keep alive the memory on the June 4 anniversary. Commemorations are expected today in at least 30 places in North America, Europe and Asia. The eight people were detained near Victoria Park where for years after 1989 democracy activists gathered on the Tiananmen Square anniversary. The police said the eight had been detained after displaying protest items loaded with seditious wordings, chantings and committing unlawful acts. Hong Kong activists say such police action is part of a broad campaign by China to end dissent in the city that was promised special freedoms for 50 years under a one country, two systems formula when former colonial power Britain handed it back, to, back in 1997. 
Security is significantly tighter across Hong Kong this year with up to 6,000 people, 6,000 police officers deployed, including riot and anti-terrorism officers. Senior officials have warned people to abide by the law. In a statement, the police said they are highly concerned about some people attempting to incite and provoke others to commit illegal acts that endanger national security, public order and public safety. In Beijing, Tiananmen Square was thronged with tourists taking pictures under the watchful eyes of police and other personnel, but with no obvious sign of stepped-up security. An explosion near the central Ukrainian city of Dnipro hit a two-story dwelling, injuring at least 13 people as other residents remained trapped under the rubble. Sherhi Lysak said three children were among the injured. Emergency services were at the scene in a town just north of Dnipro and had pulled one man out from under the rubble. Video posted on social media by the Ukrainian Presidential Press Service showed rescue teams working at a shattered, smoldering building amid piles of twisted building materials. The location of the video was not verified. Reports on social media said a Russian missile caused the explosion and that an emergency services building was also hit in the town known as the Pidorodnenska community. There was no confirmation of a missile strike from Ukrainian military officials. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, also writing on Telegram, said the strike occurred between two dwellings. Moscow denies its military forces target civilians. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that people found guilty over a deadly rail accident in eastern India will be punished stringently. At least 288 people were killed and more than 800 injured in Friday's incident in Odisha state involving two passenger trains and a goods train. Rescue efforts have concluded with officials saying all trapped and injured passengers have been retrieved. Modi has visited the scene Tabling, labeling the incident a painful one. He also met victims of the disaster in hospital and vowed that his government would leave no stone unturned for the treatment of those injured. It is still not clear what caused the multi-train collision in Balasore district, which has been described as India's worst rail accident this century. An investigation has been launched, although Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has blamed technical reasons. Some 2,000 passengers are thought to have been on board the two passenger trains involved. The exact sequence of events has been the subject of conflicting accounts. It's time now for the sports news. Sports news. Nepal's women team have clinched the five match T20 series against Malaysia. In the decisive last match of the series played earlier today at UKS Cricket Ground in Bangi, Malaysia, Nepal snatched a hard-fought three-wicket victory. Sent into bat first, Malaysia posted 109 runs for the loss of five wickets. One Julia top scored for Malaysia with 47 runs. Winfred Dura Singham contributed 24 runs, while Mahira Ismail chipped in with 20 runs. Kavita Joshi claimed two wickets for Nepal, while Nepal were guilty of conceding a significant number of extras. Chasing 110 runs for victory, Nepal lost wickets at regular intervals as they were reduced to 34 runs for the loss of three wickets. Skipper Rubina Chetri and Sita Ranamagar added 26 runs for the fourth wicket partnership to revive the innings. Sita Ranamagar top scored for Nepal with 34 runs, while Rubina contributed 23 runs. Nepal came under pressure with a flurry of wickets. However, Jyoti Pandey and Apsari Begum added 19 runs for the eighth wicket to take Nepal to victory. Apsari remained unbeaten on 15, while Jyoti was also not out on 11 runs. The series was two all ahead of today's decisive match. Nepal's skipper Rubina Chetri was adjudged the player of the tournament. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.